Bill C-16 passed the House of Commons by a vote of 248 to 40. It passed the Senate by a vote of 67 to 11 with three abstentions, and on June 19th, 2017, it received royal assent and became the law of Canada. And the question I've been getting in comments and direct messages on a daily basis, is Bill C-16 in fact criminalizing, misgendering people? Let's break down this vlog. <laughs> Always. Hi, how are you doing? I am Viva Fry, a Montreal litigator turned YouTuber. I do these things called vlogs, V-L-A-W-G-S, where we break down and analyze something that's going on in the legal world in terms that can be understood by lawyers and non-lawyers alike. <sighs> Quite a few of my recent vlogs have been touching on issues of freedom of speech. And I've been getting tons of responses to the effect that no, we have no free speech in Canada, comics get fined for making offensive jokes, and this new Bill C-16 has effectively criminalized misgendering someone. And when I don't understand something, I have to look into it to make sure that I understand it. And I did. And a lot of the misunderstanding I can see arising from the new Bill C-16 and its implications arises from commentary that one Jordan Peterson has been putting out there to the effect that Bill C-16 effectively criminalizes or legislates language to the effect that it is now illegal or criminalized to misgender someone. And it is a complex matter and one that requires delving into in order to understand what is going on, what Jordan Peterson is saying, and whether or not, in your own opinion, it is an accurate reflection of the consequences and implications of Bill C-16. So let's do that. Bill C-16 is the shorthand way of referring to an act to amend the Canadian Human Rights Act and Criminal Code. And all that Bill C-16 did was add gender identity and gender expression to protected grounds under the Canadian Human Rights Act. It also added gender identity and gender expression to certain criminal acts and sentencing in the Criminal Code, and we'll get into it. And for those of you who may not already know this, the Canadian Human Rights Act is a statute that was passed by the Canadian government in 1977. The purpose of the act is to provide equal opportunity to groups that may have been the object of discrimination practices in the past. Prohibited grounds of discrimination up until the passing of Bill C-16 included sexual orientation, race, religion, marital status, age, creed, color, disability. Bill C-16 added the terms gender identity and gender expression. The provisions of the Canadian Human Rights Act apply throughout Canada, but they only apply to federally regulated activities. In other words, it only applies between individuals and federal entities, federal regulated entities, banks, government jobs, etc., etc. Each province has its own human rights and anti-discriminatory laws and has its own tribunals to deal with complaints under those protections. And those protections apply in between individuals. So for example, a stand-up comic makes an offensive joke mocking an individual with disabilities. That is a complaint between two private citizens. That individual can file a complaint which the human rights tribunal of any specific province can hear. And in fact, one such case was heard in Quebec where a stand-up comic was in fact ordered to pay $42,000 in damages for making an offensive joke about an adolescent with disabilities. We will get to that not in this vlog, but in a later vlog. In this vlog, we are dealing with the Canadian Human Rights Act and the extent and implications of Bill C-16, which just passed two years ago. And so what did Bill C-16 do? It added the terms gender identity and gender expression to grounds of discrimination under Section 3. And let's read Section 3. For all purposes of this act, the prohibited grounds of discrimination are race, national or ethnic origin, color, religion, age, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, marital status, family status, genetic characteristics, disability and conviction for an offense for which a pardon has been granted or in respect of which a record suspension has been ordered. And that is part one of what Bill C-16 did. Part two of what Bill C-16 did was add the terms gender identity and gender expression to certain criminal offenses. And let's read those. Section 318 of the Criminal Code of Canada, advocating genocide. Everyone who advocates or promotes genocide is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding five years. In this section, genocide means any of the following acts committed with the intent to destroy in whole or in part any identifiable group. And we will skip to the definition of identifiable group, which is found in paragraph four. In this section, identifiable group means any any section of the public distinguished by color, race, religion, national or ethnic origin, age, sex, sexual orientation, gender, identity or expression, or mental or physical disability. And part two of part two of the implications of Bill C-16 on the criminal code, the changes it brought to the criminal code are also found in section 319, which we will read right now. Public incitement of hatred. Everyone who, by communicating statements in any public place, incites hatred against any identifiable group where such an incitement is likely to lead to a breach of the peace is guilty of an indictable offense or or an offense punishable on summary conviction. 
any identifiable group. And that is where the effects of Bill C-16 come into play, because as of the passing of Bill C-16, identifiable groups includes gender identity and gender expression. And the final effect of the passage of Bill C-16, as relates to the criminal code, relates to sentencing. So let's read that section called Other Sentencing Principles 718.2. A court that imposes a sentence shall also take into consideration the following principles. A sentence should be increased or reduced to account for any relevant aggravating or mitigating circumstances relating to the offense or the offender, and, without limiting the generality of the foregoing, evidence that the offense was motivated by bias, prejudice, or hate based on race, national or ethnic origin, language, color, religion, sex, age, mental or physical disability, sexual orientation, or gender identity or expression, or any other similar factor. So as we can see, the wording of Bill C-16 is such that it adds gender identity and gender expression as a protected grounds of discrimination. It criminalizes advocating genocide based on gender identity or gender expression, and it criminalizes public incitement of hatred based on gender identity and gender expression. Thus far, on a plain reading of the amendments, there is nothing that criminalizes misuse of pronouns, and there is nothing that legislates language. So what is Jordan Peterson talking about when he brings these things up? Now, many people might accuse Jordan Peterson of exaggerating, some might accuse him of lying outright, others might accuse him of arguing a reductio ad absurdum that has not yet materialized in any concrete form. And this idea that seems quite common among Americans, at least as I can tell from comments on my videos to the effect that Canada has criminalized misgendering someone or is legislating language, I can understand where people are getting that from listening to Jordan Peterson, because he certainly does paint the picture that it is criminal to misgender someone in Canada, or potentially criminal. And while Jordan Peterson's rhetoric might be slightly exaggerated or oversimplified to the point of inaccuracy, it's not entirely baseless altogether. And here's why. Each province has its own human rights tribunal which adjudicates on complaints of discrimination or discriminatory practices. And Jordan Peterson often refers to the Ontario Human Rights Commission and their guidelines as to what could constitute discrimination or harassment as relates to use of pronouns. There's a specific section dealing with whether or not it is a violation of the code to misgender someone. And I'm going to read that right now. Is it a violation of the code to not address people by their choice of pronoun? The law recognizes that everyone has the right to self-identify their gender and that misgendering is a form of discrimination. As one human rights tribunal said, gender may be the most significant factor in a person's identity. It is intensely personal. In many respects, how we look at ourselves and define who we are starts with our gender. And the decision referenced in the footnote was in fact a decision where the tribunal found misgendering an individual to be discriminatory. It was a situation involving the police where apparently the police continually referred to the individual as a male or used male pronouns, despite the individual's self-identification as a trans woman. And this is presumably one of the situations that Jordan Peterson is referring to in promoting the idea that Bill C. 16 criminalizes misgendering individuals. Something worth noting, however, which undermines the idea that it is in fact the amendments put forward in Bill C-16 that criminalize misgendering someone, this particular decision was rendered in 2015 before Bill C-16 even came into force. So this decision where the tribunal found that misgendering someone could in fact qualify as discriminatory practices was rendered before Bill C-16 even became a law. There are details to that particular case which might explain the decision, and we may have to dissect that decision in a totally separate vlog. And we may have to dissect that decision in a totally separate vlog. It you know what, no, we have to dissect it right now, actually, because the details are important. In that particular case, the complainant is a transgender woman who goes by the name of Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson's legal name is Jeffrey Allen Dawson. Dawson alleges discriminatory behavior based on sex as a result of six separate incidents involving the Vancouver Police Board. All but two of the incidents were dismissed, but on the two incidents that were recognized as discrimination based on sex, it wasn't just that the police misgendered Dawson. Apparently, in one of the two incidents that was recognized as discriminatory based on sex, Dawson was not provided with necessary medical treatment that was required for her gender reassignment surgery. Apparently, while in custody, Dawson advised the police and the nurses that she had to perform a procedure upwards of four times a day, referred to as dilation, and she wasn't given the opportunity to do so. On the second occasion that was also determined to be discriminatory based on sex, and the police officers that arrested her apparently repeatedly referred to her using male pronouns and by her name, Jeffrey. And apparently, Dawson was again prevented from performing performing the procedure that she needed to perform as a result of her gender reassignment surgery. Okay, you gotta get out of here. Oi! Ah, let's get this up here. So it is not a judgment that is as easily summarized as saying someone was misgendered in their pronoun, therefore it is illegal to do so in Canada. Bill C-16 even became a law. Another incident that Jordan Peterson frequently refers to occurred at Wilson Laurier University where a professor was disciplined or reprimanded for having shown to her students Jordan Peterson's debate on the gender-neutral pronoun discussion. 
And just to give you the rundown, I'm going to read from a CBC article summarizing what happened. A university teaching assistant who gained prominence after being disciplined for showing students a TV clip of a controversial professor discussing gender-neutral pronouns is suing the school. In an unproven statement of claim filed this week, Lindsay Shepard says Wilfrid Laurier University behaved negligently, leaving her unemployable in academia. The suit, not tested in any court of law, names the School of Waterloo, Ontario, two professors, and a manager of the university's diversity and equity office. It seeks a total of $3.6 million in various damages. CBC is clearly and deliberately using terminology to make it abundantly clear that they are not supporting or promoting the lawsuit that has been filed by this teacher. By the plain reading of Bill C-16, it does not legislate language and it does not criminalize misgendering someone. It adds gender identity and gender expression to prohibited grounds of discrimination. It makes it illegal to advocate for genocide based on gender identity or gender expression. It makes public incitement of hatred on the basis of gender identity and gender expression illegal. And it adds gender identity and gender expression for aggravating circumstances in sentencing. I don't think Jordan Peterson considers that to be a bad idea. In fact, he has admitted as much. He takes issue with the fact that this might in fact legislate required language or criminalize the improper use of gender pronouns. And it's an interesting thing. The human rights tribunals are necessarily going to be pro-plaintiff. They're necessarily going to be more protective of the people that they were created in order to protect. So one can have legitimate concerns that these tribunals that were set up for the very specific purpose of protecting vulnerable classes of people might render decisions that could be described as being excessive at times. But that's why you have higher courts to reign in the law. And it remains to be seen whether or not Jordan Peterson's fears are actually going to come to fruition. But at the very least, we all now know what the law says. And while I have your attention, if you like this content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share my channel with friends and family and help me grow. I greatly appreciate it. It remains to be seen how these laws are going to be interpreted and whether or not Jordan Peterson's fears are going to come to fruition. But at the very least, now you know what the law says. You can do your own research and you can come to your own conclusions. And now you know your vlog. Peace out. Boom.